What's going on guys, this is Preston Moore here today with more tutoring and before we go any further, I would love for you guys to click the like button and click the subscribe button down below. It's gonna make sure that you continue to get all of our best tips and advice as it relates to both SAT and ACT prep. Also, we're going to be putting out some college admission strategies and things for you to think about as you apply to your dream school. Now again, I'm one of the co-founders of More Tutoring. I attended Georgetown University, graduated from Harvard Law School, and during my time in those schools and since graduating, I and the tutors that work with us have helped countless students to reach their goals as it relates to standardized testing exams and the particular dream schools that they are wanting to attend. At More Tutoring, we hire only tutors that scored in the 99th percentile of all standardized test takers, and we hire only those that are currently attending or have attended in the past one of the nation's top 10 universities. Now, I am so excited today to be joined by Scott Arbery, who is one of the tutors here with More Tutoring. Scott is currently an undergraduate at Harvard University and has a lot of, uh, of SAT and ACT tutoring experience that he brings to the table. If I remember right, I think you also did pretty well on the ACT, is that right? Yes, um, I'm super excited to join More Tutoring. Um, like you said, I'm an undergraduate at Harvard University. I've tutored students in the ACT and SAT for over a year, and I scored an eight, uh, 36 on my ACT exam. Um, and Which I guys, think that's like pretty good. Is that right? Is that pretty good? Some would call it a perfect score. <laughs> some, so. would, some might say that. Um, so Scott, okay, I have a lot of questions for you, and I know that the people that are watching from home that are maybe on the front end of this whole process would have some of these questions, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to, to ask on their behalf. First, Lots of people out there talk about the SAT and ACT as being just one part of the application. And uh, almost like the tone behind that is being like a sort of an excuse that, well, you know, if I do, if I have a lot of extracurriculars, if I have a really high GPA, if I have lots of offsetting things that uh, I don't have to excel on this exam to, you know, I'm already scoring at the 90th percentile or I'm already doing something like that. Based on your experience tutoring, working through the admissions process, and then just based on all of the people that you know at Harvard. Is that true? Is that an accurate view? And if not, what is the correct way to think about the SAT and ACT? So the important thing is to get to know the school that you're applying to uh, and the range of scores that students um, typically have when they get accepted to those schools. Um, so while it may be correct in saying that a good score or even a perfect score will guarantee you getting mm -hmm. into a college, yeah. um, it can definitely work to your advantage and if you're below average, um, say in the bottom 25th percentile of students applying to that school, um, it would put you at a big disadvantage to some other students. So um, uh, we can get students to uh, shoot for a goal of top 25th percentile of all students applying to their dream schools. So is it in that, so you're saying that like the confidence met place, and it's not to say that you can't get in apart from that, is, is in that 75th percentile and above. Yes. Okay. Definitely. One of the things that I know on with with some of our standardized exams that that we teach is that a standardized exam will not necessarily get you into a school, but it can keep you out of it. Yes. Uh, lots of schools have um, some sort of criteria for scores that they like to see. Um, so when they look through your application, they will um, you know scan GPA, test scores. Um, and then they will sort you into a pile, per se, um, like a, a no pile, a maybe pile, and a pretty likely pile. Um, and so- And that happens just on the standardized exam? That happens uh, typically a combination of GPA and standardized test scores. Um, so um, yeah, so test scores can um, be really important into the first look that colleges give to your application. Do you know anyone at Harvard personally because I would imagine it's like at some level, you know, not that you're everybody's running around talking about it or like, you know, being weird about it. I know during I mean, during my time at Harvard Law, it wasn't it wasn't that way. Right. Um, but but where, you know, it'll come up in a conversation, you know, people have different experiences with it. Do you know anyone that did poorly on the SAT or ACT at Harvard? Um, I, I don't know anyone that has uh, scored below a 32 at Harvard. Um, I know people do get in probably with a lower score than that, but the, um, the average score at Harvard is, is um, around 34, 35, um, probably closer to the 35 range. 
Okay, so then that brings me to the next question that I would imagine I would be having if I were at home, which is, okay, if this is an unavoidable part of the application and if there's no real substitute for this, if I can't extracurricular my way around this, if I can't GPA my way around this, if this is going to be one of the vital inputs for my admission, it, I mean, is this just, is the SAT, are the a SAT and the ACT IQ tests? Like, like, is this because because if it if it is, then we should. I mean, we should all probably just go home if we're not hitting that number, right? I mean, is this something that you can actually expect to see dramatic improvement in if you you know target it the right way, or is it just yeah, maybe you'll pick up a point or two, but but that's pretty much it. Uh, so the biggest misconception students can have is that um, their scores will stay static throughout their entire academic career. Um, so what the SAT and ACT do um, is they test your conceptual understanding of knowledge in uh, math, science, reading, or I guess science only on the ACT, but in uh, math, reading, and grammar. And um, they also test your um, test-taking strategies. So um, as you progress through high school, you will uh, learn more of the concepts um, that come up on the on these exams but through practice and through getting instruction you can really improve in the test taking strategies getting to know the test understanding your strengths and weaknesses and working on those and I've seen um, from the students that I've tutored um, some students having uh, you know a score improvement of 200 plus on the SAT um, and like seven points or more on the ACT so um, I know it is possible for students to dramatically improve their scores um, and dram get you know, a dramatic uh, amount of confidence from their experiences with tutoring and practice and just a sustained uh, studying plan on the SAT and ACT. What is it that separates, I mean that's, it's good to hear, what, what is it that separates, because I, I know when I was getting ready and going through the prep process, admittedly, when I, when I was an undergrad myself, didn't put in the level of diligence and of effort towards preparing for the SAT and ACT. And I kind of just accept it because I, I think I was operating under that view that this more or less was you rolled up to the exam, you maybe took a Princeton review crash course for a week and you got to the end of it and where you were was where you were. And that was just, kind of, I mean, that was it, right? And I think a lot of people have that view. What would you say separates the people like me that ended up, you know, scoring on, when, I w when I was in high school on the exam, uh, you know, doing well, but not blowing the exam out of the water and people that end up coming to the exam and really go the distance and actually throw down a 36 on the ACT and actually throw down a 1580 or 1600 on the SAT. I mean, what, what separates the people that are smart enough to do it but don't from the people that actually make it happen? Does that make sense? Absolutely. So um, the number one thing is getting started early and um, sticking with a study plan. Um, so. Uh, I'd say around um, sophomore year is a good place to um, start thinking about what your goals are in the ACT and SAT and how you're going to get there. Yeah. And for some students, it may take um, you know eight weeks. For other students, it will take um, you know twelve months or eighteen months to get where they want to be. Um, and I've seen a lot of students. Um, I've seen their hard work pay off. Um, getting started early and then uh, getting tutoring, doing practice um, every week. Uh, you know, this is not an exam that you can cram for because mm -hmm. uh, it tests um, skills uh, like typical t tests at school don't. And it takes a while to build those skills and to gain mm -hmm. understanding of the test itself um, and to really examine, um, you know, all the types of questions they're going to ask, everything you're going to encounter and to get to know the patterns. Um, so that's the first thing. The second thing is, um, I'd say, people that um, you know, seek to learn from people that know more than they do. So yeah. a lot of times this means uh, you know, looking for tutors that um, 
may be able to help you improve on your weaknesses. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, some students are able to get through the test uh, self-studying um, or you know, just using online content that they find themselves. Um, I haven't seen that work at a great success rate, but it is possible. I know um, many students give themselves the best shot at, uh, at achieving their academic goals when they go to tutors, when they go to uh, teachers to understand concepts that they um, have found that they don't know. Um, I, I want to take a minute there and I want to I want to go through and talk about some of those different pieces of content that we saw as we were preparing for this video and we're figuring out exactly what the things we were that we wanted to Let's address that we saw that were out there and I want to get this you know directly from uh, you know a perfect scoring uh, tutor at Harvard University like I, I want to get this as like it from somebody that's trustworthy because we saw some of the titles we saw there their content is crazy if, if you're going and taking a you know a crash course sat like one of these different the different prep companies that give you the opportunity to come in for a course that meets every day for a week or every day for two weeks are you giving yourself the chance to do your best on this exam um so i personally don't think that that is the approach that gives you the best shot to achieve your goals. Um, I mean, just in terms of concepts, there are around 50 concepts that the SAT and ACT uh, test for math. Mm -hmm. There are um, over 30 concepts that they're uh, testing in English, grammar, language arts. Um, and then um, that's not even to mention the uh, skills that you have to build over time, yep. uh, especially in the reading sections. Mm -hmm. Learning how to map a passage uh, is one strategy. Um, how to dissect questions mm -hmm. and um, understand the patterns that the uh, writers of the SAT and ACT put into the answer choices. Um, that's all uh, knowledge that you will accrue over time, um, both by practicing yourself and by listening to people who have taken the time to understand the test, mm -hmm. yeah. um, which is something that all of the more tutors do uh, and have done in the past. So, and I, I know we're probably running up against time here, so I, I don't want to, you know, drag this too long. Um, I, I guess I'll, I have one uh, kind of last question for you, as you, you know, as you've touched base on this, because ultimately, you know, we're a tutoring company. We're putting out information that is provide, you know, help hopefully giving some insight into what it really takes to get some of these scores and to get to some of these. Um, when you hear someone say that, like to, to your response of saying that, you know, you need a plan and you need all these, you know, different components to your SAT, ACT prep strategy. And you hear someone come along and say, well, I bought a Kaplan book and I locked myself in my room for a month and I came out and I got my perfect score. What would you say to that person? And in the face of that, would you still maintain the value of tutoring? Yeah, um, I mean, so I was mentioning earlier uh, things that I see in students that succeed. Um, I said, first of all, students that start early. Uh, second of all, students that uh, seek help. Lastly, it's students that are motivated to get um, that perfect score or that, um, that academic goal of theirs. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a very difficult project to undertake to do all the studying by yourself. And there's only so much that you can learn, um, you know, doing the preparation by yourself uh, oh. because there are certain insights um, that, uh, you know, tutors or other people have learned by experience, have learned um, through communicating with uh, others about the test and just by studying the test um, for several years and seeing how it uh, changes and transforms. Um, and, you know, I think that uh, tutoring provides an additional level of motivation. Um, it makes it way more enjoyable to the student. Um, I can say that uh, I've never been one to want to lock myself in a room for a month <laughs> and uh, study a standardized <laughs> test. Yeah, we did um, enough about this last year, didn't we? We did that, uh, yeah, I guess, we did <laughs> online school. Yeah, um, right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, meeting with a tutor that I really uh, connected with on a personal level 
and that I felt was looking out for me um, made a huge difference on how I viewed the test. Um, I guess both tests. Yeah. Uh, and um, I was able to stay motivated through a period of several months, um, studying the test, you know, a little bit at a time, um, and meeting with a tutor uh, who, in some ways, was a mentor as well. Right. Um, and right. yeah, I mean, that made all the difference. Awesome. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you for tuning in. Um, and again, if, if there's any way that, that we can work with you, if you'd like to work with Scott, if you'd like to have the chance to get insights from somebody that has taken this exam, uh, that's been through the same process that you've been through and that has achieved the exact sort of dream goal uh, that you have for that SAT and ACT prep, Give us a call. We would love to work with you, Scott, or other tutors um, that uh, that are you know of a, of a similar caliber and um, that can can guide you through this process and show you you know not just you know how to lock yourself in a room, but how to really make this a uh, a time of thriving and of of successful preparation for this exam. Um, that's all that we have for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Until next time, we'll see you guys soon. Mm -hmm.